Hello everyone and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Happy feast day, Mary, mother of God. And as we move into this not so shiny new year, her children are going to be depending on her more than ever. What the commies have done in America is what they've managed to do everywhere their presence has fouled the planet. They've created a war between the classes, but in this case, it's getting really bad. What we see unfolding before us is a system where the elites oppress the peasants. And yes, this includes the hierarchy over the faithful. The cultural elites are, in no particular order, the media, the government, Hollywood, Silicon Valley, and corporate America. Expand that traditional pool and toss in the U.S. hierarchy because, well, birds of a feather. What the elites all have in common is one simple principle, that they are better than the peasants. Therefore, everything they pronounce is automatically correct and people must obey. Let's take that principle and apply it across the board and see just how true it is. Let's start with the media. Whatever they tell you is true, and if you dare challenge the narrative, you smelly, unwashed peasant, you're an ignorant, gun-loving, homophobe, racist, white supremacist. The government? They pass the laws, jack up your taxes, ignore the pleas of the little man, and pay for it all with your money, you stinking peasant. Hollywood? The entertainment industry is populated with perverts, child sex traffickers, and rapists. Then they take their private lives and put them on giant screens and demand you accept it all as normal, you ignorant puritanical peasant. Silicon Valley. Giant tech is about free speech unless you speak the truth. They are the ones who fact check you and decide truth, you dangerous revolutionary peasant. Corporate America. If you want to do business with us in any form, you will accept and embrace gay sex. The employees will not object, and you will take the diversity training classes, and you'll like it, you defiant peasant. So carrying the principle into the hierarchy, you will pay us with your donations, but we will close your parishes, deny you authentic teaching, give you gay clergy, liturgical abuses, order you to wear masks, receive in the hand, make a reservation for mass, and stand miles away from each other. And you'll do it, you disobedient peasant. What ties them all together is the double standard that they all wield in their own favor but clamp down on and crush you with. Whether it's the phony face mask mandate, eating out at restaurants, promotion of child sex trafficking, canceling your vote by election fraud, or refusing you access to the sacraments, the elites clearly understand that you are on earth to serve them not the other way around. It's class warfare, and what's most, the peasants don't seem to understand this. The comforts of life that they've enjoyed, the peasants up to now, have been little else than a narcotic, something to deaden the intellects and excite the passions so you don't pay attention to them installing themselves as monarchs over you. Once they have locked down that power, which they are pretty darn close to securing, you can expect the disappearance of the so-called middle class. This happened in the Soviet Union, as well as China, Venezuela, Cuba, and everywhere else on the planet. The middle class is a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of man. And, well, we can't have that, can we now? Likewise, in the church, how dare you ask for financial transparency? It's frankly none of your business how much of your money we spend or how we use it for attorneys, erratic catechesis, or gay sleepovers at the seminary. We are the only ones, the hierarchy, who get to speak of clericalism because we know that we don't really mean what we're saying, so don't get any ideas about being, becoming uppity laity using our own empty platitudes against us. Another striking parallel between the Episcopal elites and the cultural elites is the constant appeal to the superiority of being college-educated. In politics, you hear it all the time, nonstop. Oh, the college-educated would never vote that way. Only those dumb hicks, the commoners, the working class deprived of a college education would vote that way. You get this exact same attitude in the church if you've ever run into the lesbian in charge at the chancery. Oh, you'll have to confer with Sister Perpetua Bulldyke. 
She has a PhD in liturgy and she says adoration is forbidden. Her office is just down the hall and she's the one with the man's haircut and build. Remember, the elites are the ones who want to defund the police for you, but hire private security for themselves with your money. The Episcopal elites are the same ones who want your weekly money for the parish, but not actually you in the pews. Unchallenged, this will result in full-on communism within a generation, as the next generation will be educated to believe this is just how things are. In fact, that has already begun. On the political side, Trump was or is the antidote to all of this, which is why the landslide election in his favor had to be stolen. But in the church, no champion has emerged, nor is there likely to be one anytime soon, at least not in the natural order. There are no conditions in place for the rise of a Catholic Trump. The church doesn't work like that. It's not a democracy nor a republic. It's a hierarchy. And once the hierarchy has become corrupt as hell, as this one has, there's little option but to hunker down and live out the faith in small communities. That doesn't mean the evil should not be challenged, exposed, and the wicked perverts not exposed to the broad light of day. But it does mean the motive cannot be an overthrow of the institution. In America, the government belongs to the people, and they can revolt against it and overthrow it whenever they see fit. But Catholics can't do that in the church because we know that the church doesn't belong to the hierarchy. They have proven themselves to be little else than spiritually murderous hirelings, and God will be their judge, jury, and executioner for eternity. So faithful Catholics who are also American patriots are going to have to live out this kind of schizophrenic reality, fighting the enemies of Christ outside of the church one way, while battling the enemies of Christ inside the church in another. But both need fighting. After all, fighting and rebelling against injustice is what peasants do. And remember, we didn't ask for this class warfare. It was brought to us by the elites in the church as well as outside the church. God love you. I'm Michael Voris.